Hello everyone and welcome to the FTB Spot. I am your host Matt and today's episode we'll be talking about the automatic wire mill. The automatic wire mill is used to increase the amount of wire you get per ingot. Normally it takes three copper ingots to make six wires, but if you use the automatic wire mill you can do the same with just two. Each copper ingot is going to turn into three copper cable. You can also use this with tin cable, gold cable, and the HV cable you get from the refined iron. Now the copper, the gold, and the refined iron will increase the amount of wire you get by 50%. The tin wire will increase by only 33%, but it's still an increase. Now this is a Greg Tech machine, as you can see from the symbol right here and it's finally one of the Greg Tech machines that's gonna actually help you instead of make your life a little bit harder another thing that this automatic wire mill will do if you take the copper cabling uninsulated copper cabling and you put three of them into the machine again it will further process them into fine copper wire now this is a very nice thing because the only way to get the fine copper wire normally is with a diamond draw plate. To make a diamond draw plate you're gonna need a diamond panel and iron panels and to get that you need a diamond handsaw which needs two diamonds plus a block of diamonds. It's so you get the idea. It's a pretty good idea to build this automatic wire mill if you are needing the fine copper cabling. Also if you'd notice if you look at the fine copper cabling in the NEI system it only shows one recipe to get it. That's because this is actually a secret recipe that is not in the NEI system. I'm not sure if they just haven't updated this or if this is intended to be something that is a secret that that you uh, can't discover from the NEI. You can also do the same thing with the HV cabling. If you do this, it'll make fine iron wire, which right now can only be used to make a wool card. That's something to get string from wool. So not entirely useful but you can also use it for that. The automatic wire mill is part of the automatic machines of Greg Tech, and because of this it works a little bit differently than how we're used to the normal machines from industrial craft. If you look in here it has two different input slots and it has two output slots and again you can click this right here for the recipes to see all the different things that you can get out of this and you can use a number of different types of ingots to get the same same effect this right here is again for a battery that's pretty common in all industrial craft machines somewhere to input your battery if you don't have it hooked up to any wires it also has three buttons over on this side. This button right here, I have not figured out what it does. I have not found any documentation on what it does. So if anyone does know what that little button does, please let me know in the comments and I will put a, a little annotation in this video right now to let you know what this button does. Or if need be, I'll make another video. These next two buttons I'm going to go over in just a little bit. First, I need to show you how to get materials out of this thing. Now, there's going to be a number of different sides that are smooth, and one side that has this little button looking thing or little output slot. That is the output. Now, as you can see, I already have some copper cabling in here, and I'm going to put a stone transport pipe there, and nothing will happen. It will not automatically output. You do need something to actually pull the the piece of material out just like a regular wooden pipe you need something to pull it out now I'm gonna turn this guy on right here and as you can see the output slot is not facing the uh, the wooden pipe right now that means nothing's going to happen well not exactly if I put some not or I need copper wiring in here it's going to process it really nicely and it's also going to yank it out of the side. Uh, all these sides that are smooth are actually connected to these slots right here. So if this is happening to your automated machines, that's because your output slot is not on the correct side. Now to change the output slot, you need to take a wrench. If you left click on the side you want it to come out of, it will 
output on the opposite side. If you shift and left and right click, did I say left click? Right click, it will switch over to the side that you're looking at. So what we're gonna do here is shift right click on the output side and from then on out, it's going to actually output what it's supposed to be outputting, which is the copper cabling. The next thing we're going to look at is what makes this an automatic machine. To do that, I need a couple of other automatic machines, which I have right here. We have an automatic macerator, an automatic e-furnace, and an automatic wire mill. As you can see, I have the EU hooked up to just the automatic macerator. Now it's going to crunch up some ore. We're going to pull that off for a second. I'm going to show you what these two buttons do in this demonstration. I do have all the output slots hooked up this way or, or orientated this way with them going to the next machine. So now this has made some copper dust. So I want this copper dust to go into the e-furnace to smelt it down. You can do that by pressing this button. Once you press this button, it will automatically take the output material and transfer it to another automated machine. It won't transfer it to any pipes automatically, but it will transfer it to the automated machine. Now, why hasn't it? Is this a bug? Is this a glitch? Did I do something wrong? No, this is Greg Tech. Uh, he's coded this to only do this occasionally. Every 60 seconds or so, it will grab, it will check if there's anything to grab, and it will dump it into the next machine. That's to reduce lag. Now, you saw that this didn't go all the way through. It ran out of power. One way to power this is to use this next button. The first button was to toggle the transferring to of the material to the next machine. This button is to toggle energy to the next machine. And I have been I have been having a bit of trouble with getting this to actually transfer the energy over. As I was setting this video up, I had trouble, and here we go again, I'm having more trouble. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna knock this out. I'm gonna put another, turn this on, put another one down. Nope, thank you. Put another one down and check if that will fix this problem, and it did. This, uh, these automated machines are still under development. They're a little bit buggy in how they work. So if you have some problems with them, you might just have to pull them up and place them down again, fiddle with them. It's really something that, honestly, I would recommend waiting until they're a little bit more developed and uh, the coding and all the bugs are worked out before you actually start using them for your main machinery. As you can see now, with this button toggled and the power button toggled, the transfer and the power button, it's going to automatically transfer the copper dust and it's going to transfer electricity or EU, excuse me, to this machine. Now this one is set up to automatically transfer over into the automatic wire mill. Again, I need to toggle the power, which again is probably going to give me grief because it doesn't like me. So let's knock this guy out and Oh, you know what? The reason this happened is because it's n when I put the new machine down, the output slot wasn't put the right direction. There, I keep doing that. There we go. This then should work just fine. So as you can see, the first machine is hooked up to the power. It's transferring the power and the supplies to the next one, the power and the supplies, excuse me, materials to the next one. And there you have it. Everything is in a nice straight line. Unfortunately, as of this point, we can't put any overclockers or any other upgrades into it, so it's rather slow. Again, that's going to have to change. It may change in the very near future, and this video will be obsolete, but as of right now, I'd say it'd be probably best just to hold off on these. But if you want to use them, this is how it works. first thing that you will need is you need to have either a machine block made with refined iron or a sturdy casing made with bronze. We'll just hang on to that for now. You also need something called a conveyor module, which is a bit different. This is not the same conveyor mod conveyors that you use to uh, 
to make the fact what is it factor factory something a factorization it's a different different uh, mod with conveyor belts instead of pipes it's a different conveyor belt it's a Greg tech module and this is going to require your glass circuits a battery and either refined iron plates or aluminum plates not both you can't mix them you can use one or the other. I recommend refined iron plates because aluminum's a bit hard to get And for this. So we're gonna grab this conveyor module out, and finally we get to the automatic wire mill itself. You need brass plates, electronic circuits, a diamond, the conveyor module, and either this machine block will give you the automatic wire mill or the sturding casing will get you the automatic wire mill. You can also use, can you use machine parts? No, there's, there's something else um, you can use on this. A machine block, you can use machine frame from factorization or that other, the other bronze machine hull or aluminum machine hull. Honestly, the sturdy casing or the machine block are probably gonna be the two easiest just because one material. So that's how you make the automatic wire mill. Last thing I want to let you know about, and I'm going to have to switch into a creative mode here. The automatic wire mill, I've been using 32 EU per tick power supplies here. If we go to a higher level of power supply, and try to, because remember you need to Oh, boom. Uh, it's it's not going to hurt until you put something in it, I don't believe. But once you try to actually use it, that thing's going to blow. Do not use, and this is what I had, 128. You need to use 32 for this. Another thing, the last thing I'm going to leave you with before we finish here is that normally, when this is unpowered, you can break it with a pickaxe. You're going to trash your machine but you can do it safely. When these things are powered, something a bit different happens if you break it with your pick. The whole thing just blows up. Now that was a pretty small explosion as far as Greg Tech machines go. Probably because it wasn't, either didn't have a lot of power in it or it wasn't operating. I'm not sure exactly why. As you can see, the explosions can be quite large and can ruin your entire setup because they cause chain reactions. Do be careful, use your wrench, and, and you will be safe. Wrench. Good. Pickaxe. Thanks for watching the FTV Spot. Hope you learned something. And if you liked this video, please hit the like button. Also, if you want to see more videos on how to use the FTB Ultimate Mod Pack, please subscribe. I'm going to be trying to put these videos out at least once a week. And uh, hopefully we'll learn a lot here. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And I'm hoping to address those perhaps in videos at a later date. I've kind of been toying with that idea. Thanks for watching.